Hi, I'm Patrick Olson, managing editor for Cars.com, and this is our top 10 movie cars. Chicago is no Hollywood, but it still has a great cinematic history. In fact, three of the top 10 movies on this list were shot in our great city. It was the LA subway that made the Italian job a hit, and it was the Italian job that made Mini Coopers a hit. Who can forget Mark Wahlberg and Charlie's Theron driving the Mini Coopers in and around the subway trains under Los Angeles? And number nine on our list is the only emergency vehicle on the entire top 10 movie car list, and it's the Ectomobile from Ghostbusters. You can't park that here. Imagine you've got to get $5,000 to the county clerk to save an orphanage. Now imagine you've got every police officer in the entire state of Illinois chasing you. What car do you choose? Well, if you're Jake and Elwood Blues, you choose a 1974 Dodge Monaco. Sure, in the end, everything fell apart. At least the orphanage was saved. If you saw Blues Brothers and you recognize this Picasso statue, number seven on our list of top 10 movie cars comes from the whole other end of the spectrum. It was American Graffiti and it was a 32 Ford Coupe. That Coupe became the hot rod of the 1970s. Hi, we're in beautiful downtown Chicago, and number six on our list comes from the Chicago suburbs. You remember Wayne and Garth? Well, they had a 1976 AMC Pacer, it had the hot decals, and it had the Bohemian Rhapsody blasting through the stereo. You remember. <laughs> this is my best friend, Garth Elgar. Hi. I think we'll go with a little Bohemian Rhapsody, gentlemen. Good call. Now, these aren't the streets of San Francisco, but it certainly reminds us of them in the 1968 Mustang and Steve McQueen's Bullet. It was a really hot car, and the seven minute chase scene is one of the most memorable in film history. But what was with all the Volkswagens that day? James Bond was the epitome of cool, and that was shown best in 1964's Goldfinger with his Aston Martin. He had all sorts of gadgets and everything he needed. He was one cool dude. Let me have a martini stirred, but not shaken. All right, how about a beer? All right, give me a Mr. Pitt. Thanks. You'll be using this Aston Martin DB5 with modifications. Auto visual, range 150 miles. Smoke screen, oil slick, rear bulletproof screen, and left and right front wing machine guns. It's a great day to play hooky, and what better way than a 1961 Ferrari GT from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That one was cherry red and was incredibly hot. Who could resist driving it? Not even the garage attendants. Less than 100 were made. My father spent three years restoring this car. It is his love, it is his passion, it is his fault he didn't lock the garage. Last year, this car didn't even make our top 10 list of movie cars. This year, it's at number two, and that's thanks to you, our users, and your outcry. It's the 1977 Pontiac Trans Am for Smoking and the Bandit. You're doing good, didn't you, Fred? We're here at the Marine Corps Air Station at Miramar, the scene for Top Gun. Now, Top Gun didn't make our list of top 10 movie cars. Understandably, I think the most memorable thing with wheels was a motorcycle. But it does bring to the fact that our number one movie car of all time is a flying car. It's the DeLorean from Back to the Future. It's got the flux capacitor. It has a little faulty time mechanism, but still, it's a winner.